So in the last few videos, we've been talking about vector products or cross products and how to sort of calculate their direction and their magnitude. And we also talked about the right-hand rule to kind of give us a quick indication of the direction of that resultant vector when you take the cross product. So in this video, I want to talk about the cross product or the vector product specifically for unit vectors. So unit vectors. And remember, the unit vectors are i, j, and k. And these are special vectors that have all a magnitude of 1, and they lie on the x, the y, and the z axes, respectively. So if I were to draw these unit vectors out uh, on their respective axes, then this would be i, this would be j, and this would be K. Now, the interesting thing about these unit vectors is that they are all perpendicular to one another. So I and J, they're perpendicular here. J and K, they're perpendicular here. K and, you know, I are perpendicular there. They all have 90 degrees between those two vectors. And in previous videos, we learned about how to calculate the cross product. So let's say you had two uh, vectors, P and Q, and you decided one day you were bored and you wanted to take their cross product. So P cross Q would give us some vector, which I'll just call V. Now we could figure out what the direction of V was using the right-hand rule, and for the magnitude, so the magnitude of V, we had a special formula where we took the value of P, multiplied it by the value of Q, and then multiplied all of that times the sine of the angle between these two vectors. Now I said that the angle between all of the unit vectors are 90 degrees. So if we plugged in 90 degrees into this term right here, well that would give us sine of 90. And we know sine of 90 degrees is just 1. And what's even more interesting is we know that these unit vectors have a value of 1. That's why they're called unit vectors. So if we were to take the cross product of two vectors, let's say i cross j, so I'll write i cross j right here. Now we know that the magnitude of both of these values, the unit vectors, are 1. So if we plug them into this formula right here, what's interesting is that let's say uh, we substituted i for p, so this right here uh, would be a value of 1. And then we substituted j for q here, and that would be a value of 1. And then we took the sine of the angle between them. Well, the sine of the angle between i and j, that is just 90 degrees. So this right here is just 90 degrees. And we know what the sine of 90 degrees is. It's just 1. So what's funny is that we're taking 1 times 1 times 1 gives us a value of, you guessed it, 1. Now, that's easy enough to understand. So the idea here is that when you take the cross product of any two unit vectors, the magnitude of that cross product vector is going to be 1. Now, we also need to figure out which direction that resultant unit vector is facing. So we know that if we take the cross product of i cross j, it's going to be along this line, but in which direction? Well, if you decided to use the right-hand rule, you could lay your four fingers from your right hand along I and then curl them towards J. And you could see that your thumb would sort of be pointing out of the page. So it would be uh, pointing along the Z axis, so in this direction right here. So I cross J in this case, oops, sorry, that would give us positive K. And that's just because the right-hand rule tells us if we do i cross j, our resultant uh, orientation is going to be in the z-axis. Now, what if we did j cross i? Well, we would know what the magnitude of this is, right? It's just going to be 1 by this equation. We're just multiplying 1s together. But what is the direction? Well, if you took your right hand and you laid your four fingers out along this axis right here, and then you curled them towards I, 
you would see that your thumb would be pointing into the page, going the opposite direction of Z. So in this case, J cross chi, uh, I would actually be negative K. Now, it's sort of hard to memorize this three-dimensional structure right here and use that to figure out the magnets or the directions of these uh, resulting cross products when you take the vector product of two unit vectors. Instead, it's easier to uh, sort of explain it using this diagram that should hopefully make this process a lot easier. So this diagram, and you might have seen it in your textbooks, but I'm going to write the unit vector i here, j here, and k here. And then I'm going to draw a circle around these three unit vectors in the counterclockwise direction. And what this diagram tells us is that if we took the cross product of any two vectors here, we could get the direction, either positive or negative, using just this diagram right here. So in this case, in this example right here, where we did i cross j, we would do i cross j, and that direction is going this way, right? We're doing i cross j, so it's going this way. And because this red arrow, uh, the one that I have drawn right now, is in the same direction as this arrow, so both of these are counterclockwise, the resultant would be k, and it would be positive k because it's going along this arrow. However, if we started here, in the case of this second example, so we did j cross i, then we would get k, but we would be going in this direction. And you can see that arrow is going against this arrow that we've drawn. So we're going clockwise when this arrow right here is counterclockwise. And because it's going against the arrow, we know that the sign is going to be negative. Now we can use this trick for any two unit vectors here. So if we did k cross j, we know we would get i, but because we started at k and went this way, right, to j to get i, you can see that those arrows are going against this big arrow. So k cross j would be negative i. Well, what if we did j cross k? So instead, we're now going this way. j cross k gives us positive i. Why? Because we're going in the same direction as this arrow. We're going counterclockwise. So you can use this diagram to essentially figure out which direction the cross product is going when you take the cross product of any two vectors. Now this is going to be important when we actually start working with three-dimensional or vectors in a three-dimensional space, right? Every vector in a 3D space has three components, one along the x, y, and z axes. And so we can sort of use this trick to figure out when we distribute all the different components in a cross product of actual vectors, we can figure out the direction of all those vectors using this diagram right here. Now, there's a couple important notes. The first one is that, well, what if we took i cross i, or j cross j, or k cross k? What would those values be? Well, remember, if we took i cross i, the angle between those two vectors is zero, and the sine of zero is zero. So i cross i would just equal zero, and that would go uh, for j cross j or k cross k. All of those three cases, the cross product would be zero. But for all other cross products like i cross j or j cross k, you can use this diagram to figure out which, uh, what direction that resulting cross product vector is going to be.